Okay, so this is radioactive isotope dating. Uh, we're going to talk about how we determine how old something is. So radioactive isotopes are used to determine the age of objects by measuring their rate of decay. The most commonly used method is carbon-14 dating. Now there are other isotopes that use, but carbon-14 is the most common. Uh, carbon-14 is this nucleus here, which has eight neutrons, six protons, and it's formed in the upper regions of the atmosphere. And what happens is it filters down into, uh, well, it reacts with oxygen or ozone in the upper regions of the atmosphere, and then filters down into plants um, where it becomes part of the food chain. Uh, plants take it in, animals eat the plants, other animals eat other animals, etc. And so while those plants and animals are still alive, they're constantly taking in new sources of carbon-14. When they die, though, uh, when the plants and animals die, there's no more longer a new source of carbon-14 coming in, so we start to see the decay of carbon-14 becoming nitrogen-14. And we can see a decrease in the amount of carbon-14 present. Now, carbon-14 becomes nitrogen-14 via beta decay, where a proton becomes an, or sorry, a neutron becomes a proton, and the half-life for this process is 5,730 years. So the half-life is continuous, but the rate of decay is decreasing over that time. Um, it's a, every 5,730 years you see the material, amount of material present cut in half, but the rate in order for that to stay constant, the rate has to be decreasing. So to show you how this happens, or why this happens, we're going to do a little sample here with M&Ms. We're going to start with 12 M&Ms, and every minute we are going to turn half of the M&Ms over so the M doesn't show. And when we do that, what you can see is that the rate will decrease. The rate of turning the M&Ms over decreases. So we're just going to make a little grid here. Uh, so that we can work this out and label time, M&Ms, and rate. And the M&Ms are the M&Ms remaining. So at zero minutes, we have all 12 of our M&Ms. And we're not going to even worry about the rate at this point, okay, because we haven't turned anything over yet. But after one minute, we're only going to have six M&Ms remaining with the M showing. So we've turned over six per minute during that first minute. Uh, after two minutes, we're going to have three M&Ms remaining. So in that minute, going from one minute to two minutes, we turned over three per minute. The rate decreased. In the third minute, okay, we have one and a half remaining. So we've turned over one and a half per minute during that minute. Now, that is the rate of the M&M decay. Here is the rate of carbon-14 decay. And what you can see is that for carbon-14, what we have is we start with a decay rate of f approximately 15 decays, disintegrations per minute, but it decreases over time. So the initial amount is fi around 15 per minute, but if we get out around 3,000 years, now we're around 10 per minute. And if we're at about 6,500 years, we've dropped down to under 7 per minute. So even though the initial decay rate is 15 disintegrations per minute, it decreases over time. And this is how we're going to measure how old something is. So here's a sample problem. Okay, So we're going to go through solving a problem here. Uh, so you, you find an old piece of parchment paper and you detect that it is got undergoing carbon-14 decay at a rate of 9.8 disintegrations per minute. How old is the paper? So if you think about what we did with the last video on isotopes, where we uh, on half-lives, we used the equation starting material equals one-half to the n power, where n is the number of half-lives, and one-half to the n power equals the remaining material. And we're going to use the same equation here. Okay, So using this equation, where n is the number of half-lives, Obviously, the starting amount is given to us in problem as 15 decays per minute because that's the initial decay rate or disintegrations per minute. Um, that's the initial decay rate of carbon-14, and the remaining amount is 9.8 disintegrations per minute. 
All we're going to do is plug these values into the equation, and we get 15 times 1 half to the n equals 9.8. So now we just have to go through the process of solving it. So 1 half to the n is going to be equal to 9.8 divided by 15. We divide both sides by 15. 1 half to the n power is going to equal 0 0.6533. So now we're going to set, turn this into a logarithmic expression like I showed you in that first half-life video. Um, log of 0 0.5, base 0 0.5 of 0 0.6533 equals n, which means, as we did in the last video, n equals the log of 0.6533 divided by the log of 0.5. We evaluate those. These are, of course, base 10 logarithms. So n equals negative 0.185 divided by uh, negative 0 0.301, so n equals 0.615 half-lives. So it's a half-life for carbon-14 is 5,730 years old. The 5,730 years, the object is 3,520 years old. And you can see, if we look at our graph here, that's exactly what we end up with.